Hey guys, welcome to Friday, March 20th for AP Stats. Today we're going to cover the, uh, the two sample proportions inference testing procedure. There will be one homework problem and it's going to be in the book. And uh, let's go through how to do it. We're going to start off by using the same information that we left off with yesterday. We covered another example of the uh, two sample confidence interval for proportions. So here we have the 80 freshmen and 52 liked the online learning program. We have the 90 seniors and 72 of them liked the online learning program. And what we hopefully remember from yesterday, if we're using notes or we're just watching the videos in sequence, is that we came up with a confidence interval, which was at 90%. And the confidence interval was entirely negative at negative point. 2619 to negative point zero three eighty one. We said yesterday that an entirely negative confidence interval basically said we're 90% confident that the true difference between the freshmen and the seniors was actually one-sided. It didn't span zero. Being one-sided, it meant it was all negative, all on the negative side, gave us pretty good evidence that the seniors liked the program better than the freshmen. Okay, so just like before with one sample testing, we had confidence and hypothesis testing. We have the same thing for the two sample procedures. So let's go through how to do that. As always, there are conditions. I find it actually easy to extend this little organizer to create another layer for conditions. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do a little line there, keep it going down, and remember what our conditions were. So the conditions were SRS, and we said in the first place when I discussed the prompt that it was randomly selected. So we'll say that that's given, and it's got to be given for both of those samples, and it was. We also talked about the 10% rule, so I'll just say 10% to shortcut the condition that we're verifying now. We said that so long as the population of freshmen was at least 800, and the population of seniors was at least 900, that condition would have been verified, and we, again, feel that that's true. And then we had the condition for NP hat and NQ hat being at least 10. We can see that the freshmen had 52 yeses, and that meant 28 noes. And the seniors had 72 yeses, which meant 18 noes. Well, you see how we have a nicely organized list of conditions now. So I've got all of my, my, my uh, summary data, and I've got all of my conditions verified. We're good. We're going to run a confidence, I'm sorry, we're going to run the hypothesis test. Oh, and it did the confidence interval. But we're going to run the hypothesis test in conjunction with the previous confidence interval. What that means is that was a 90% interval. So I'm going to use an alpha level of 10%, which is obviously the complement of 90%. Now, for space, I'm going to uh, erase this. You guys, of course, feel free to use that. Um, the statements. We need to write statements for significance testing. We already know that we need to have a null and an alternate. We're talking about proportions, so capital P. I'm going to use a little subscript of D or the letter, uh, capital or lowercase, or the word diff if you want, because we're indicating that we're talking about the difference in the two populations' proportions. Now, the null statement for almost every time you're going to do this is that there's no difference between the two. Okay, that makes sense. We're testing whether there's any difference at all in this case. So the null, there's no difference. How do we write no difference? Well, that means that the proportional difference equals zero. If I started off the prompt saying, I think seniors like this better, or I think freshmen like this better, that's going to give us one side for the alternate. But I didn't start off that way. I said, is there any difference between them? Well, if the null is that the difference equals zero, my alternate is going to be that the difference does not equal zero. 
Making this a two-tail test, which you already should know, means at the end, after we find our p-value, we're going to double it. Again, if the prompt gave you one-sidedness, you're going to go with that, but this one did not. All right, well, we know that we have to find a z-score to find where we're sitting for this difference. So the z-score for the difference, here's my formula. It's p hat sub 1 minus p hat sub 2 divided by the square root of p hat sub c, hold your questions, q hat sub c over n sub 1 plus p hat sub c q hat sub c over n sub 2. All right, there's your equation. Write it down and make sure you understand it. Okay, so you're asking, well, what the heck is p hat sub c? c stands for combined. We have to find the combined proportion of success. Not that hard to do either. How do we find it? Well, I'm just going to keep going over here. I don't need to add it to my table. I'm just going to use the space. To find your p hat combined, it's actually pretty easy you add x sub 1 plus x sub 2, and you divide it by n sub 1 plus n sub 2. After all, success simply is x over n, so the combined p hat is going to be found using this formula. All right, well, all that means is it is 52 plus 72 divided by 80 plus 90. Now, I've already prepared the problem, so I, I know what my p-hat combined is, provided I can find it on my uh, clipboard. Okay, good. It's 0.7294. And, of course, q-hat combined is, as always, 1 minus p-hat combined, so it's 0.2706. Okay? Okay. You see it, you understand it, you could do it yourself, I'm hoping. So now let's find out what we get for our z-score for the difference. So it's 0.65 minus 0.8 over the square root of, and this is kind of a pain to write, but you have to, 0.7294 times 0.2706 over 80 plus... 0.7294 times 0.2706 over 90. If you want to put it all in your calculator, feel free to do so. Just please put parentheses around the numerator before you divide by the square root of. You can just type this all in as it appears. You don't even need parentheses in the calculator for the denominator. It knows what to do. P hat times q hat divided by the n plus, you just type it all in. It, it'll keep it straight. I get a z-score for this particular problem of negative 2.1962. All right, negative z-score. We already understood we we're going to get a negative value because we already knew from the previous prompt that we had a negative confidence interval, but it's okay. Our numerator showed a negative difference. Okay. If I were to draw a sketch, which is always a good plan, I'm going to put zero down here, negative 2.1962 here. It was a two-tailed test, so I'm also going to put positive 2.1962 and shade in both directions. Two-tailed test has two tails. Okay, find the area in those tails. Because we have our conditions verified, we've normalized our distribution, so I can use normal CDF, which was always the plan. Normal CDF, I'm going to go from the negative infinite bound to negative 2.1962. If you want to complete the filling in part, zero is the mean, one is the standard deviation, because after all, we've normalized and I'm going to get my p-value so far of 0 0.0140. But that's only in the one tail. 
So I'm doubling it because I have to. Now my P value is 0 0.02808, so 0 point, sorry, 0 0.0281. All right, everyone see that? Hopefully we're good with it. In order for me to write any more, I'm gonna have to erase my board. But I'm gonna hold part of it intact, okay? I'm going to remove, so hopefully you've written everything down, this part of it so I have room to write my explanation, okay? So, I've got a p-value. I know because it has to basically um, uh, work complementary to my confidence interval that I had a 10% alpha. Remember, a confidence interval is two-sided, all right? There's area to the left, there's area to the right, and you're going to have to understand that a confidence interval technically is a two-sided test. If you run a confidence interval, but then you follow it up with a one-tail test, your results may not agree with each other. You have to understand what you're finding at every step of the way. So my p-value, 0 0.0281, is definitely less than my 10% alpha. What do I do? I reject the null. All right, what that means is there is sufficient evidence. I'm gonna write this all down as painful as that might be for me. There is sufficient evidence of a difference between the populations of freshmen and seniors let's say uh, preference for online learning And I'll specify at the 10% alpha. <sighs> Why am I specifying the 10% alpha? Well, think back to what other common levels of alpha there are, five and one. At a 5% alpha, I still would reject the null. But at a 1% alpha, given this p-value, I wouldn't have been able to reject the null. It does make a difference. All right. Hopefully you wrote down what you had to write down, you understand the process, and the one homework question you have to answer won't be too hard. It's on page 631, number 21, okay? Of course, there's a double check. I'll go over that on Monday. It's clearly gonna be the two prop Z test on your calculator. Feel free to experiment with it and see if you can get verification for your answers. Have a wonderful weekend.